Let's talk about the significant impact of emotional suppression on immune system and cytokine release. You might recall from prior co videos that one of the things we want to avoid is a cytokine storm, which can damage and destroy our cells. And the thing is, if you're an emotional suppressor, studies have shown that that can actually elevate your chronic cytokine release, making you more susceptible to this cytokine storm. Let's pay attention to this one incredible study where what they basically did was they measured the amount of nasal cytokine levels after subjects were exposed to rhinovirus. But before they did this, they actually assessed their behavioral patterns. They gave them a 10 item questionnaire and they classified people on a scale to see if there were more cognitive reappraisers. So these are individuals that when they're faced with challenges and situations, they basically change the way they think about these situations. So they are reappraisers or reassessors. The second category of subjects are basically those that suppress their emotions. So if you ask them questions about situations, they'll typically say that I'd rather keep emotions to myself. Suppressors can look very calm on the surface, but they're bubbling and boiling inside with all types of emotions that they just can't process. Now what they did was they exposed them to rhinovirus, which is a cold virus similar to coronavirus. And what they found was those that were cognitive reappraisers had lower nasal cytokine levels. So they were not producing an excessive amount of cytokines like interleukin-6. And how does this actually happen? Well, what happens in our brain is our brain has a couple of incredible circuits that can increase cytokine release. One of them is the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve basically right here is a circuit that runs in two directions between the brain and the gut. So when we're under stress, we can stimulate the gut, which is a major focus of um, immune system function, to release more of these chemicals that we've talked about called cytokines. The second circuit is through our adrenal hyp hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis right here. We call it the HPA axis that increases cortisol and that also stimulates an elevation in cytokines. So when we're suppressing emotions, again, we look calm on the outside, but our body and immune system can sense it and our gut and our adrenal axis stimulate the elevation of cytokines. Rumination is another way to think about this. That's when those emotional suppressed thoughts are recordings that are playing back and back over and over in our head. And when we tend to ruminate more about past events, like why did this happen 5, 10, 20 years ago, we're at a significant risk for depression. I often call this pre-depression if you're constantly ruminating about past events. Those of us that ruminate about future events, what's going to happen with COVID-19, what's going to happen to me, my family, etc., we tend to be more anxious. So we might already have chronic anxiety or we, we, we may be at risk for anxiety, which is why I call this more pre-anxiety. Okay, if you want to really learn about rumination, be sure to read my post on this. This is one of the most important blog posts I've done and it'll uncover the risks and how to adapt to rumination strategies that can really help you with this thought process. Now, when we say re reframing and reassessing, this is what we're really talking about. Look at the current state on the left side. So that's our emotional brain, the amygdala. And then what we're trying to do is we want to reframe situations so we can activate our Einstein brain, the prefrontal cortex. So in this COVID-19 environment, some of us might be thinking, I might get sick and die. But you want to maybe think about it in a more healthy way, like how can I acquire the knowledge and survival skills to help me and my family, my loved ones to not only survive, but thrive through this period? Okay, what about I'll run out of stuff I need to hoard? What about I'll shape, I'm sorry, I'll shop in a rational manner, and this is a better, healthier practice for future emergencies like natural disasters. So you can see the examples I've put here on the left side. We want to reframe it to a healthier pattern that does not activate that emotional brain as much because that emotional brain right here, when this is chronically activated, it activates that immune system in a more significant way, and then we get that elevated cytokine release, which is what we're trying to avoid. So release techniques include cognitive reframing, which we talked about. Physical exercise can help us relieve some of that emotional suppressed stress. Breathing practices and meditation, and I've alluded to breathing before in the past. I'm going to provide more strategies in future co-videos. And then talk therapy. Talk out these emotions with a family, with a friend, a therapist if necessary. Because remember, suppression is suffering, and your immune system is exquisitely sensitive to suffering. So don't be a suppressor, be a reappraiser, and practice these strategies. For my resources, download my free COVID ebook, 
subscribe to my YouTube co-video series, and follow me on Instagram.